What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Other Side of the Firewall, uh, where we highlight the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as those uh, movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Tynes. What's up? What's up? And LaVon Maynard. What up? What is the deal? So uh, if you still tuning in, so this week's all about uh, seems to be cybercrime and how the Department of Justice is fighting it. Uh, yesterday, we discussed what the DOJ was doing uh, to uh, take down a specific website that was selling credentials, uh, along with international partners. Uh, and then today, uh, we will discuss some uh, some pretty good FBI tactics. So without further ado, I'll give it to you, Shannon. All right. So this article actually comes from the New York Post, um, and it's written by Samuel Chamberlain, and it's, t- it's titled, FBI Encrypted Phone App Leads to Hundreds of Global Underworld arrests and like when I, when I read this I laughed a little bit because I was like yeah this is exactly how this would happen so what ended up happening was uh, law enforcement officers um, came up with this app right they actually uh, it was actually in Australia New Zealand um, they, they had this operation it was Operation Trojan Shield and they created this app called Anom A-N-O-M I hope I said that right Anom Anom whatever it may be so what they did was uh, they ended up handing out uh, these phones, and then they started to sell them on the black market, these phones that had this app on it that they were they were telling people that they could use to communicate to do their dirt. Well, the whole time, you know, the FBI and you got your Australian uh, authorities and your, your New Zealand authorities, uh, it was, it was uh, 18 different countries um, that actually made police raids, um, the UK, Germany, Netherlands, Sweden. Um, so they sat back and let these people do dirt with this app from these phones that were handed out to them, right? And it's one of those things where when you're, when people see something that they think is good, like they pass it on to everybody else, right? So this criminal criminal tells this criminal, hey man, you gotta get one of these phones, got this Anom app on it, you know what I mean? Like download this, you know what I mean? Nobody can see it, it's this, that, and the third. And all the time is law enforcement looking at what they're doing, right? Mm. So, <clears throat> but hey, this is what happens, right? Like you, you, start, you start doing that dirt, you know what I mean? I mean, right. there's, kind of, there's kind of no full, I mean, people will tell you there are apps that are secure out there, right? Like you, you got your signal and 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 some of this other stuff that's out there. They're, they're like, oh, it's a it's a hundred percent, you know, uh, 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 safe for you to use. The government right. can't get it. This that, and the third, right. but somebody right. has that information. Just know somebody has it. Okay, so it's just a matter of you know the Justice Department probably coming down, you know, or a judge saying, yeah, you can you can you can go and take this information or and. and uh, telling a company that they have to give it up. It's it's just a matter of time before that does happen. But yeah, they um uh yeah, some of the some of the stuff that they highlight in the article though. So um Australian Federal Police Commissioner Reese Kershaw told reporters that the app helped thir- thwart 21 murder plots, including one that would have targeted a family of five. Um but again, like in all of these countries where these ra- raids went down, these these it was for murder plots, it was for drugs. Um what else did they have in here? Uh, yeah, they, they went through and found 25 million encrypted messages in real time that they were looking at as this stuff was going through. So like they were just they were just building their case as all this stuff went up. You know what I mean? All this stuff happened. And and the thing and the thing about this that was kind of funny that I read in here, right? So the idea for them to do this, um, it was American and Australian uh, law enforcement officers, and they they made this happen after drinking a couple of beers. So like this is back in 2018, they were just getting together, drinking some beers and we're like, you know what, we should do, we should like get a phone and put an app on it that we could track and just start handing it out to criminals. You know what I mean? And it was just like, that is a great idea. You know what I mean? And obviously obviously it was right. Because like you had people that were buying these phones and using this app and they just, they went out there after monitoring for a while and, and, you know, started doing what they need to do. And like, Hey, you want to do crime? This is this is kind of the consequence of it, right? This kind of reminds me of a. Uh, you remember they used to do those fake uh, people used to win those fake prizes and show up at the yeah. people with warrants, and they would right. show up <laughs> at those places and they get arrested. You know, thinking they want a cruise or something, they walk through the door, police right. arrest them. You know, it's kind, of, <laughs> it's kind of what you get when you do stuff like this. But uh, Levon, what's your thoughts on this, man? Yeah, as you as you as you were saying that, that made me think about uh, was it Chris Hansen when they uh, uh, yeah. catch a predator? <laughs> I, like, I call you Chris Hansen. 
<laughs> so I got something for you right over here. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this this is definitely like a good good thing. I it's it's like uh, I'm pretty impressed that they they went through this effort to catch these uh, these, these underground criminal rings. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of makes you also think about like the, the the line from Jurassic Park, like clever girl, clever, clever girl. Because <laughs> they're doing, you know, they're doing this kind of stuff to uh, catch people, you know, catch people slipping up and, uh, you know, these, these criminals get comfortable with an application that they think is like an encrypted app. They can send their, their uh, you know, send their messages on the, on, on the uh, you know, on the web there or whatever, on the, on, on the interface and just you get their, get their, uh, you know, get everything planned out, get the drug deals, get their, their uh, weapon exchanges, whatever they're doing. But now that the, uh, these law enforcement groups have, have figured them out and, and, you know, put something in place to, to help uh, capture, capture them. And he's able, you know, they're able to go around and try to ring them up a little bit. They probably put their like names and addresses in these things, thinking that it's like uh, all encrypted and nothing's going to get out to the public. But uh, yeah, I mean, generally speaking, I mean, just like you were saying earlier, I think you said it, Ryan, but uh, you know, outside of this being, you know, this is a good thing, but obviously for us as, as consumers using the applications and products like this, you guys always got to be aware that, you know, not everything you put out there is going to be, uh, you know, hidden. Somebody, somebody's going to have access to it. Somebody's going to be able to look at it if they need to. Um, so you got to be, uh, you know, got to be smart about it, but I'm glad that these hackers or these, uh, these, these criminals were not smart and that they were, uh, they were hemmed up for their, for their abuse and, and misuse and, and, uh, you know, all the criminal activities, but, uh, I hope, hope that these these kind of things continue to happen, and you know maybe even some of these like I don't know maybe some, somehow they can make it uh, into uh, some sort of application that these ransomware groups can 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 start you know chomping on, and then also we can we can wrangle up some of these ransomware groups that have been kind of uh, terrorizing the U.S. as of uh, you know last few years. But uh, what you got on this, Ryan? What you think? Yeah, it is pretty funny, uh, and it, it's just clever right it's just like okay here's a, here's a burner phone with yeah. an app that that uh no one's going to catch you so i guess they said it was uh uh the lead key like this so they said uh remember who played key roles a fugitive who's actually on the run right now for drug trafficking like he was like oh <laughs> like he, he, i guess he got it he got it in the pipeline like maybe he hooked up a couple friends and then just ballooned from there right word of mouth uh and now he's on the run they're like nah come on come turn yourself in <laughs> mm -hmm. right it right. may be it um, may be safer for him, right? Because like the thing is, it's not just that he's running from the police. Because the people that he that he gave this to, like, yeah, they're upset too, right? Mm -hmm. Their friends and family are probably looking for him too. So it's like, right, you can come get some witness protection. <laughs> you can stay Man. Out there. Oh. right, right, yeah. And he said people were getting so uh, so uh, comfortable with it; they weren't even talking to shorthand anymore. They were openly talking about murder. Like, hey, I'm about to kill these five people. <laughs> you like, right. yo, like you just don't think crazy. You ever gonna get caught? Because what if somebody had uh, what's called it? Like, what if uh, one of your criminal friends had gotten arrested and got his phone taken? Mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what if it was a legit app? You just talk openly about murder. Like people just <laughs> out here <laughs> wild. Yeah. Uh, and what's what I think is is uh, even funnier is that they could do this again. Because who's who's gonna read the New York Post and remember this? You know, mm -hmm. a couple right. years from now. Right. Like, so there's new criminals every day. So it's going to be a brand new group of people like, oh, you got that app. <laughs> right. <laughs> we can openly talk about murder and drugs. <laughs> yeah, really. So, yeah. And then, like you said, Levon, like it, it just like, makes you think about uh, even legit applications, like mm -hmm. someone's able to probably decipher, read and then uh, use the information against you potentially in the future. So no one should feel safe, like especially not criminals talking about crime openly, but don't don't say or do or take pictures of anything. You don't want to come back to uh, to, to haunt you years from now because uh, nothing is secure uh, right. forever. Like it might be secure right now, but it's not secure forever. Mm -hmm. So just be be cautious, be careful out there. Um, but yeah, when I saw his article, I was like, this is, that's pretty hilarious. Like it makes me think of like Grand Theft Auto or something. Like, <laughs> right. Or like you said, like when I was a kid, they used to have those, uh, those warrant busts where they would, people would come in and be like, oh, I won the lotto. Like, no, you, did, you won the lotto, all right? Right, right. <laughs> going, going to jail now. Right. So you got five to 10. Yeah, but, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it was called uh, ANOM. So if, <laughs> if you got that app, like everything you said uh, can and will be used against you in the court of law. So mm -hmm. you might want to be careful. Right. Um, 
But with that being said, um, make sure you tune in to us for the rest of the week uh, as we discuss more of these cyber crimes, well, more about what the Department of Justice is doing through uh, like the FBI and so on, so on and so forth. Uh, we're seeing a lot more international uh, collaborations. So like this one was FBI in uh, collaboration with the uh, uh, Australian and New Zealand uh, counterparts who, uh, who did this thing. So, uh, you know, they're doing a lot more work. They're trying to get criminals, they're trying to... Uh, they're trying to match might for might when it comes to cyber crime. So uh, that, that's awesome. Uh, hopefully they keep it up. Um, and then later on in the week, so not Wednesday, because Wednesday's Ask SSP, make sure you choose your questions. Uh, hit me up and I'll give you the, uh, the contact info at the end. Uh, but we'll also be talking about the Colonial Pipeline and how uh, the Department of Justice was able to intercede on their behalf, uh, as well as uh, JBS, which is a Brazilian company that that uh, uh, is big into uh, poultry, beef, things that have, like food, basically, and how they got caught up in also a, a ransomware uh, scam. So uh, make sure you tune in. Make sure you uh, you uh, hit that like, share, subscribe buttons, that bell, whatever it takes, so you, where you get updated. Because we're getting close to real time. Like obviously, we record uh, part of some of the stuff happening. So like literally, I want to say it was the uh, Colonial Pipeline money being recovered. We had just recorded, so we had to wait a whole week to talk about it. But it is what it is. Make sure you stay tuned to us. Uh, hit us up on the website, www.theothersideofthefirewall.com, excuse me, uh, as well as you can hit me up personally at Rye Rye Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy on uh, Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Twitter, IG, and TikTok. And you, LeVon? Hit me up on the Twitters at LeVon Maynard. There it is. So stay safe, stay secure. Take care.